Radio.com. Since the dawn of civilization, the elusive quest in pursuit of the perfect drink continues to evolve. Now more than ever, we reap the rewards of this passion. The perfect vintage, the finest brew, or a spirit of optimum age in class. And now, SoulFlowRadio.com invites you to discover the wonderful world of booze by the glass. Hey everybody, welcome to Buy the Glass. I'm your host, Brett Hubbard, and I'm welcoming you to explore the wonderful world of wine, beer, spirits, and we got everything in between here for you tonight. I'm joined by my guest host, Jason. Hey now. I've been crazy bad on the board. No. Intern Neo in the seat tonight. Thanks for joining in, Intern Neo. We don't normally get you behind a mic over there, but it's always nice to have you. He doesn't say much, but whatever he does say, he usually seems to be, uh, to the or turn it off. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Wow. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. It's a great show we got here for you tonight. We're talking about nothing but the best in beverage culture where we drink to taste every Thursday at 6. SoFlo Radio by the glass show.com. We love having you because we love having all these great, wonderful beverages that we, you know, it, it's a real big thing in what we do in our daily lives. I got to speak for the people that love beverage. It's something, you know, you eat it, drink it, sleep it 24 7. It's, it's everything that I do and real good beverage. And I'm glad to see that the renaissance is happening, that it's uh, waking up. Uh, it's just expanding. It's exponential. It, it's continuing on. It keeps going. And uh, everybody's just becoming a part of it. It's like a wave that's rushing over the land and it's um, capturing us and I'm surfing it with my board. And I'm really enjoying it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Absolutely. I thought and, um, it was just an excuse to drink. I'm just. Man. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just wow. it. Well, it's actually I a big reading. gimmick, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. But what I'm really talking about tonight is Lagunitas. Now, the funny thing about this unbelievable brewery out of California and soon to be Chicago, which we'll talk about tonight, is that even people that speak Spanish can't even say it. I can't say it. It's so funny. Lagunitas? Yeah, it's Lagunitas. Like the thing. Lagunitas. Lagunitas. And what so, does it mean, gunitas, my, my two Cuban chiquita. friends? Uh, small lake. Mm. Small little, lake. Little lagoons. Little yeah. lagoons. And that's basically the area in which they started the brewery, I think, in around 1992 or three. Uh, basically, it's the, one of the areas in the western part of Marin County, or eastern part, I'm sorry, of Marin County, where, uh, where they started the brewery. So very interesting. Lagunitas Brewing Company is a brewery founded in 1993 in the Lagunitas, California region, the USA. They're known for iconic classic interpretations of traditional beer styles and irreverent descriptive text and stories that's found on their packaging. And of course, their Lagunitas uh, flagship is the IPA, which is a one that a lot of people try and like. The interesting thing is that um, I really love their pills is one of my favorites. It's the, it's the European or the Czech style Pilsner. Okay. It's an amazing beer because... It really has a wonderful maltiness to it, but then it's balanced with a spicy hop. But the hop gives you just enough of what... I always talk about a three-quarter tongue. That hop kind of gets on the real top of your tongue. And then by the time it gets to the bottom of your tongue, like in the back of your throat, it's creamed out. It's smooth, which is very interesting. I mean, the malt must be like... Deco they must do like some type of decoction. Okay. They really get that mouthfeel going to get the real wonderful rounded... Um, almost like they have dextrins left over to give you a residual feel. It's a pretty amazing thing. So these guys are pretty extensive with their beers. So check this out. Lagunitas IPA, right? Typical uh, six-pack. You know, they got a 92 draft magazine. Hoppy, citrusy, piney, spicy, medium-bodied. Typical, but check this out. 43 different hops and 65 various malts. Is that a freaking joke? How Yo, what do you mean there? 43? Now, George can only taste 42 hops. I'm only tasting 42 hops in here. I What's think you're exaggerating. Hey, you I, I taste maybe 41 to 42 hops. I don't taste a 43 hops in here. I was just, I, I mean, how do they come up to that number? Like, I mean, like, okay, we could only find 43 hops or uh, <laughs> we wanted to put as many hops in here and this is all we could get here by the deadline or uh, we wanted to do 50, but then we decided that at 43 was just right. Let's not go any further. <laughs> it's, it's a it's combination weird, of their, their four such. It's a weird number. It really is. How many, how many different over. kinds of hops are there yeah, in the world? Because I left. 
But I this mean, is this is the this is the culture of Lagunitas Brewing. I mean, these guys are from their crazy mixes and combinations to their their whole dog culture. Dogs are a big part of what they do. We'll get into that in the end of the show tonight. And uh, it's really all about Mr. Tony McGee. He is the culture of Lagunitas Brewing. I would love for him to call in. Unfortunately, we couldn't get him to call in. He's too busy running a multi million dollar company to call in right now. But we're going to have a wonderful representative. I believe Mr. John Donaldson, who's the Southeast uh, sales manager for the brand, is going to call in. And these guys are unbelievable. I've met some of these guys, Greg Meredith, who's the sales VP of sales. They just have the best attitude that you've ever seen in your life. They are so, they're, they're really cool, as is the best way to, to explain it. They're, they're not your typical corporate salesman. They don't wear a suit and tie, and they, they just get it done. And it's all about the beer. They say that the beer speaks and people mumble. I tend to right. mumble at times. George always mumbles. Yeah, I mumble, mumble, really. mumble, mumble. But it, basically, it's it's an amazing product, and uh, we're so proud to have it. It's been in Florida for a while, but uh, we're just now shining a spotlight it. on it. Right. Well, you're going to have it Ready tonight. To try it. Dio just informed me because I can't remember yesterday that we actually did one of the in our in our chocolate and beer pairing. We did the Chronic, which is the censored. I don't think I was here. Yeah, nope. you weren't here, so we'll we'll try that one again. But we, we got a whole uh, whole different uh, bevy coming too. up. Uh, unfortunately, John, we do not have the Lagunitas Hop Stupid tonight. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. But we will have it in the future. We're going to have the pills, the, uh, the little something-something. Everybody loves a little something-something. Uh, the IPA and the Maximus. And, of course, the Chronic Baby, which is called Censored because the funny story of the fact that the guy couldn't, he couldn't uh, put out a, b- a beer called Chronic. And they that's actually, total censorship. <laughs> I well, that's well, exactly. That's why they wrote censored on the. Oh, they wrote censored on a piece of duct tape. They put it over the bottle, and that's where it came back. So he just put it on the market as censored. That's crazy. Yeah, but it's pretty. It's pretty funny. But uh, the censored guy didn't know what chronic meant. He went home and asked his kids, and then blew a lid. <laughs> 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 that they were trying to get this out. So I'm not exactly sure what time John's calling in. Maybe Mr. Roberts, if you're uh, listening, could uh, shoot me a text and tell me what time he's calling in. You got my phone, right, Dio? Absolutely. Everything's good. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us at Buy the Glass. So Jason's got our Google Analytics working over here, I see, Jason. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, no, then I just found a dashboard plug-in for you there. That's awesome. <laughs> that way I can go and see how many of you are actually listening to the show. We need you guys to tune in on a on a, um, <laughs> on a nightly basis or at least a That's weekly George. basis. Every Thursday at 6, we're coming to you live. But, you know, buytheglassshow.com, you can always go on there, look under shows, and I have just a tremendous amount of shows. We've got to be up to, like, 150 shows. Because why? Because... March 14th is going to be our second anniversary show, baby. Yeah, yeah, two years. I think we should drink on that show. You think? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to crack a bottle open on that show. Absolutely. What do you guys want to do for that show? I mean, we should do something fun. Jason wants to drink cognac. I, can't, I, can't, even, yeah. I can't even talk about on we internet radio what George one? wants to do. <laughs> Something expensive, right? So. Yeah, 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 cognac. But everybody should pick like right? their own liquor. All right. Pick pick or liquor. Pick a liquor. Pick or liquor. All right. That's what we call it. Pick or liquor. You're a liquor picker. Okay, how about if we do this? Jason and I are twins today. We're like look like bookends. I don't know if you're looking at the camera over here, but (laughs) how about if we do this? Everybody picks their own liquor and then they get to present it on the show. Bring it in and talk about it, yeah. What do you think? Yeah. That sounds like a great idea. I get to think about this. George George will probably get a multi dark beer. No, I'm thinking absinthe or something like that. I, I have Ooh. absinthe, but uh, we've done absinthe. <clears throat> yeah, we've done that. Jason's no, absinthe during the absinthe show. Yes, no, I was here. I'm very, <laughs> uh, I'm very torn because, you know, I've got, I've got some favorites, but maybe I want to do something a little bit crazy. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Fancy. Well, this show's all about crazy, and uh, so is Lagunitas. Getting back to that. Yeah. These guys are amazing. They're out at uh, right now. They have their new well, we brewery. Have a bunch of beers to try. Should we crank one? Over? Absolutely. What time is it? Oh my god. It's uh, eight minutes after. It's eight minutes after. That's beer time. Early. Nine, okay. nine. It just turned nine. It's so beer I thirty. Know. Yes. So basically, let's start off with the uh, no. Let's start off with the pills. The pills is uh, one of their lighter beers because it's just the stylistically. None of their beers are light. All of their beers are tremendous flavor. Like I said, it's interesting when you talk about a pilsner lager. Most people don't understand that with lagers and typical lagers, not adjunct lagers. Adjunct lagers would be anything that you would add rice or corn to, like a Budweiser or something like that. You, you have full flavor. Uh, if you ever drink a, a Pilsner or Kell, you drink a Radeberger, these are full-flavored lagers, European lagers, and what they have is lagers are generally malt and hops. They just want you to taste clean, pure malt and hops. They don't need any, you don't need any fruit esters. The fermentation temperatures are such that they're cool. Lagering actually means to lock her away for up to six to eight weeks in a cold temperature, between like 38 degrees. So you're not going to get a lot of fruitiness out of it. They just want you to taste clean, pure malt, and that's what you get out of really great lagers. Now, this one here, it gives you just enough of that wonderful malt flavor, but also really backs it up with a nice hop. But the hop isn't overly spiced. 
it's it's got a really nice creaminess to the finish, which comes from the from, from the body of this beer. So, and I love tasting beers out of these Sam Adams glasses because oh these yeah, are perfect. Best you, can- you can even get a lot of. Real good nose out of this beer. Now, I imagine he uses more than just two row pale because if he uses sixty some odd different types of uh, malts in his uh, in his IPA, I, I like this kind of beer. When I was in the Czech Republic, this is what you. Were oh, you about. went to the Czech Republic. Oh, did yeah. you go to the Pilsner Kell Brewery? I didn't go to the brewery, but I was right there. I think I drank that type of beer. Mm. It was really good. So this beer, you know, has a wonderful golden color. The head on it is beautiful, of course, just an absolutely exceptional beer, and it really does nicely cling to the glass. But what you get is you get a lot of really good typical malt flavors. But remember wow. what I said about the hops? That's it unique. doesn't come through until like the three-quarter palate. That is so weird. And then it finishes creamy. Do you yeah. get a creamy finish? Absolutely. Yeah. How the hell do they do I was, that? I was it's got about- good mouthfeel. Yeah. It's got great mouthfeel. Yeah. Thank you, George. Hey, George is ready to do yeah. his yeah. own. <laughs> George is ready right to do his own, his own beer. Or something yeah, on the show. It's got good mouth too much. Wow, it was yeah. almost like it's got a kind of a weird aftertaste, but then it went right it's away. It's kind of champagne it's, kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's got a great effervescence. Wow, uh, that's they, good. These guys really create... Uh, I'm it's not sure how they do beer. this. But it's just... It's 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 a very, very... Um, I don't know. It's nice and dry. Yeah, it's got a great complexity to it. For and, and, you know, complexity is not something that you generally speak of when you talk about a lager. It's not complexity. Uh, that, so this is a, this is a definitely a treat here. Lagunitas out of California, Penaluma, California. It's interesting because these guys are building a brewery. Um, the Chicago-based brewery is going to be two hundred fifty thousand barrel. Um, yeah, two hundred fifty barrel brew house, six hundred thousand barrel capacity. That's on top of the six hundred thousand barrels they already do in Penaluma. And the thing is, is the guy he didn't want to waste all the actual um, carbon emissions and the money to ship beer across the country. Why not just? Make another brewery in the middle of the country. If you have the the resources to do so, it's really a great idea because the beer is fresher for everybody. You can get a whole new um, clientele, customer Absolutely, base, yeah. and you can really keep people up to date. I know in Florida they carry at least six or seven brands. Uh, there's a couple brands on tap, but th- that'll change as this new brewery comes online. There's going to be a lot of different brands, and what I love about these guys is they're like really do have these. What they said, the iconoclastic uh, interpretations of traditional beer styles, which is what this is. This is a great interpretation of a traditional Pilsner, but it's an American interpretation. And it comes from that really cool California style of thinking, new ways of doing things. And they said if you go out to see the brewery, there's all kinds of people there. They got people that are a 22-year-old guy on a skateboard. All the way up to some old dude in a walker from Florida going through to check out the, the brewery because it's 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 that kind of thing. And there's dogs everywhere, they say. There's yeah. dogs everywhere yeah. around the brewery. Yeah. People bring their dogs, bring your dog to work day. And they like to put out, no dogs were harmed in the in the making of this beer. <laughs> no, they, they <laughs> didn't dip any dogs in this. Cause they didn't. No. But he likes to feed filtered, his, dog he feeds his dog beer, I, I would imagine. Um, he's a real – and if you look on the uh, a lot of the bottles and if you look on their websites – Go to Lagunitas.com. I would imagine what it is. Um, you're going to see the little dog that's a bull terrier, and he's he's a pit bull, but he's not really. He's and we were talking about this before the show. Did, how many people knew that the little rascal's dog was a bull terrier? A pit I think bull? I did. And then the RCA dog was a pit bull, right? And, and then you had the Buster Brown dog. His name dog. is Nipper, by the way. Really? The RCA dog. Yes. Is he so, Nipper? Something Nipper. Like Isn't there two yeah. of them? And then. The, the, well, the, the little know, dog is named something, too, yeah. Yeah, there's a big one and a little one for RCA. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. I didn't know that. Mm. I just thought there was one looking at uh-huh. the photograph. You're a young guy. How do you even know voice. RCA? <laughs> I mean, that's it's like a, something I haven't seen since the name the of 70s. a cable. I think they're still around, oh, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think of so. course they're still around, but I mean, that, that, I think do, I they still use, do they still use that uh, yeah, symbol? Yeah, I think so. Because I remember seeing it on records. And of course, those aren't around anymore. But people always try to prove me they, wrong. They're like, "Oh yeah, I got records, records are around. The he DJs are back to vinyl now." From eighteen eighty-four oh, really? to yeah. eighteen eighty-five. Oh, that's great. Eighteen ninety-five. Yeah, see. Anyway, so the Lagunitas Pilsner. This is fantastic. It's a balanced, grainy, sweet, leafy, light-bodied, right? California Czech Pilsner. Pours clear copper color. I'm getting a little bit more of a. I didn't get a copper. You guys get copper off of that? I wasn't. No. What, the color. I, the color's no. gold. I don't know about yeah, copper. Yeah, like a gold. Yeah, that's copper. They don't copper. With a white pillow, we had this beautiful bohemian style pilsner. I, I do get her herbal hops, biscuity malts. I don't really get much citrus or floral notes, but the grain is up front. That's that, cl- that pure malt I talked about. Light sweetness. It's the only lager they brew. You know, and that's really nice too. People don't understand that when you're doing a craft brewery, you don't have a lot of stainless steel, and that's your fermentation tanks. So the less lagering you do, which takes six to eight weeks to, to produce a beer, 
the more beer you can produce. Right. If you can produce more ales that are only taking two to three weeks, you can produce a lot more product, make a lot more interesting products. Let's face it, lagers are just not as fun as ales. Ales are, are run the gamut, but lagers are, are pretty straightforward. I, like I mean, well, they're fantastic beers. They're the number one beer in the world by far. They're what you drink to be refreshing. They're, they have a, a place with our food and, and in our lives, but they're just not as fun as ales. It's, no, I got you. I mean, they're great beers. Don't get me wrong, but you got Doppelbox. You got, okay. you got. You could do a lot more with an ale. You can. You really can. But uh, so, but I've seen a, quite a few different people do some interesting stuff with loggers. Okay, so uh, John's going to call in now. I heard. So basically, uh, soon. Yeah. So uh, that's fantastic. I'm going to let him talk all about the dogs, and he's going to talk all about the uh, the new brewery going into Chicago and the history and all kinds of stuff. And uh, why don't you go grab another beer while he calls in? You want to grab the, uh, I don't think I can grab the PA. Grab the IPA so we can talk about the 46 hops, or 42 hops in the, and the, uh, and the, the 60 some odd malts. I can't believe that when I read it. 43 hops and 65 malts. That's amazing. So At least they got more malts than hops. Yeah. They do. I don't even know how they came up with that many different I, types of malts. Is that, no, I think I, that's I think a good they question. Might have, they might have had all that left over from brewing, and they just put it all but, together. But I mean, I, I study malts, and I haven't seen 43 different kinds. I mean, it's pretty amazing. There's 43 I, different kinds of hops for sure, right? I'm sorry, but yeah. 65 kinds of malts. I, I haven't Crazy. seen 65 kinds of malts. I know that there's heirloom malts, and there's base malts, and there's specialty oh, malts, up. and there's secondary malts, and there's all kinds of different. But I didn't know there was 65 different kinds. No. I hope John calls in soon so we can get to the bottom of this. Really? <laughs> solve this mystery. We'll just have to make drinking sounds until he does. Yeah, there you go. Mmm. Man, right, that is so a good Pilsner. Guys, if you a, haven't tried that, go this out. This one has a nice head. Definitely go out to Total Wine. And I'm getting a little more copper. Oh, because that's their IPA. Yeah. That's yeah. copper. Now, oh, this is a beautiful beer. We're pouring the IPA. And you can smell the hops right off the right. bat. Right. Hoppy, yeah, citrusy, piney. Yeah. A little bit of spice because of one of those 42 um, <laughs> hops. <What's> Must <laughs> be some type of traditional German type of, you know, to get the spice in there. Um, I think you're going to wow. taste a little bit of hops with this one. Very flowery. Well, you, well, it's it's floral, it's citrusy, it's herbal, it's piney, it's everything that you could possibly put into an IPA, that's and that's why it's really good. I, it's it's amazing. No, I I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Dio is it, smelling it from across the room. This yeah. is only the IPA. You, you didn't pour the Maximus, did you? Let me no, see. No, no, no. It's the IPA. The regular IPA. Where do you taste wow. the Maximus? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my god, that's got sixty two kinds of hops the in minute, it. <laughs> the minute I pop the top off, this is overwhelming smell. It's a really through. wonderful smell, and it's a pretty amazing beer. But uh, yeah, to break this down, hoppy, citrusy, piney, spicy, and it's an American pale ale. I'm sorry, it's an American India wow. IPA, Indian pale ale. And it's a full full of flavor. It's got notes of spice. There's some roasted malts, which give you the really nice copper. They Thank use goodness. some caramel malts. You guys know about that. And there's some citrus fruit that comes from the esters that are created because of the actual yeast that's used. I believe we have Mr. John Donaldson calling in. Welcome to Buy the Glass Show, Mr. John Donaldson. Hey, how you guys doing? What's going on, buddy? All right. Hey, just having fun here in the lovely state of Florida. Isn't it such yeah, a fun place a to be? Place. It's awesome. Yeah, it's man. Awesome. I'm, yeah, definitely. I'm actually a trans. I lived down here about 12 years, but uh, it's great to be back. We're really excited about being with, uh, being with you guys, and hopefully, so we'll there and have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can't. We thank you so much for calling in, and th this is like one of those types of brands that we really love to do on the show because there's such great stories, and you guys are wacky and crazy, and it's the internet, so you can get as funky as you want. Uh, but you know, it, it's it's really. Amazing, because the first thing I said was, we're going to try the IPA, and right here in the press notes, 43 kinds of hops and 65 kinds of malts. Is that just, are they are they just messing with me, or is that for real? <laughs> just a little bit. You know, we're from North Cal, and you know there's a lot of things going on there. Not only great beer, but some other stuff that's uh, not yeah. legal in some other states, so they yeah. kind of fiddle with you a little bit. <laughs> I hear you. So I, I picked some music tonight that would kind of go go well with that. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, we absolutely love it. And uh, we were talking a little bit about the history. Why don't you start a little bit about the history of the brewery? Talk about Tony, if you if you don't mind. Bring us uh, a little bit into the dog thing. We want to talk about Dogtown and and all that stuff. And then bring uh, and then kind of segue a little into Chicago. What's going on? And then future down the road. Okay, if you don't mind. Great, great. Yeah. Well, well we're lucky. Our our owner is named Tony McGee. Uh, just like a lot of folks that are out there, he got a brew kit from his, uh, actually his brother Christmas time in 1993. Uh, right at Christmas, and he went in and started brewing that day. Uh, and as he goes, tells he, 
he got thrown out of his own kitchen by his wife. Uh, kind of went out <laughs> in the garage and started doing it. Uh, and he said it, it's been magic all the way. He uh, ended up opening a little brewery about uh, eight months later and uh, it's a, it was a little building that was right in Lagunitas where he lives to this day. That's kind of where the name came from. Uh, and when uh, when he was brewing, uh, it was a little place doing really well, and they did so well uh, that uh, they backed up the septic system for the whole town. Uh, <laughs> oh my and God. when that happened, uh, yeah, when that happened, they kind of <laughs> said, "You know, guys, we love you, but uh, you we gotta, gotta go. flush, flush the toilets. So let's uh, let you guys need to move on." And that's kind of when we moved on into Petaluma. Yeah, John, so are, are yeah. you originally? Where are you from originally? California. Chicago. Okay, well, it's funny because when you say Lagunitas, that's the way I was telling these guys, if you say it right with the accent, because I lived in San Francisco for years, and my buddy used to live in Las Gatos, and, it, you know, Los Gatos, you know, but he'd right. say Las Gatos, and it's Lagunitas, yep. you know, and you just kind of get that accent down, and then it's a whole nother word. It's so funny, though. It's like I never met a guy, a white guy who could say it right. <laughs> it's just hilarious. <laughs> That's about the only thing I did right, but thanks for giving me at least credit for that. But, you did, uh, you did, you did a hell of a job. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, well, you know, you know, the, the, those uh, fifteen years of Catholic schools getting hit over the head by the Penguins was uh, damaging in some ways. If you know what I mean. <laughs> <The pens>. um, <laughs> a, a, anyway, uh, no, and we were very lucky. So Tony, we, we've been there right about nineteen ninety four. Then we moved in there, um, and uh, been lucky. It's a great spot. If you guys don't, for you guys that are out there, if you don't know where we're at, if you go right over the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, about. About forty, a little over forty-two miles north of there, and you go right through Marin County, really very, very pretty, pretty area. We're right at the uh, kind of the gateway to Sonoma, which is part of wine country. Uh, and Tony kind of picked Petaluma because it's a nice town, great folks there, and they have some great water that comes out of there. And the other thing was, you know, he, as he puts it, and if you ever meet Tony, it's exactly he goes, it's the prettiest drive in the world. So every day I go to work, it's kind of cool. I, I get to drive through some of the prettiest country in the world. And, it is and beautiful. Go, take some beer. You go right over the Golden Gate. You got Sausalito to your right. You, you just kind of head through Marin County, Mount Tamalpais on your left. I know I've did it a million times. I used to actually be in construction when I lived out there about 15 years ago. So I would always work on houses up in Sonoma and Napa and all throughout there. And uh, it was an amazing trek. And Penaluma is a great town yeah. as well, definitely. Yeah, it's cool. We're very lucky, very lucky to be there, and they're good folks, and uh, and a bunch of great beers being brewed out there, as you know, in a lot of places yeah. too. So, kind of cool stuff. Well, and then we, we've kind of been growing and doing decently over the years. We've had several different brands. Our IPA is about half our business, um, and it's really cool. Our, our IPA is right about fifty-one IBUs, so it's a little lower than some of the big beers. And We're sixteen right alcohol. Now. It's very sessionable. It's very great. sessionable. And it is. Yeah, it, yeah, and not, it. but still has enough flavor so people like it. Um, no, it's it's so that's kind of cool. You know what's amazing is we try we started out with the pills and you know with loggers there's not a lot of complexity to a logger. Let's face it. I mean, but you guys no. managed to get a wonderful amount of, of maltiness, the clean malt flavor. Then it goes into the hops and then it backs away on the end to where it almost tastes like an aftertaste, but it's really mouth feel uh, to yeah. where you get a creaminess that creams the hops out. How the hell do you do it? Yeah. It's, you know, Jeremy, our, our head brewer, and, and you'll see this pretty consistently with most of our beers, even our big beers like Hop Stupid and stuff. Even though there's a lot to them, uh, they finish cleanly. And he kind of, he calls that out all the time. He goes, that's, you know, it's kind of my little thing I try to make and everything that, so people can enjoy it. Um, I mean, there's some, a bunch of great beers out there, but sometimes, you know, you have one or two of them and there's a lot to it. And it, it really doesn't allow you to, to have several more. Ours are kind of a little different. And we've been lucky enough that way that people uh, enjoy it and, and and can do multiple ones depending on which one. You gotta be careful with it. Some of those are some big beers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so other than beer, what do people love in the world? They love dogs, and you guys bring that dog culture right right into the brewery. So two of the things I love most in the world are my beer and my dogs. So tell me a little bit about how that came about. Well, it came about the dog. The, the dogs that's on there is uh, just kind of Tony's love there. And if you go to a brewery, everybody uh, in the world brings their dog. Uh, they're all in there. Uh, it's really cool. It's a good feel. Every, you know, you can bring them into what we call the beer sanctuary, where the, where the brew house is, and the customers can come and visit us. Uh, but the, you know, it, it's really cool because they, they're just walking around and, and and everything. The only bad thing is our carpets don't look really good. Uh, <laughs> but that's a small price to pay to be able to take your dog. <laughs> when are you gonna get tile, man? <laughs> you, you got to, well. Hey, that's a good. That's an easy price to pay. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's their dog. And, and for me, for my wife and I, we you know we uh, before we had kids which is shocking. I have a little girl, uh, which is shocking if the state of Florida let me do that. Uh, but that's a different <laughs> discussion. 
Uh, we had we had our dog, and that was kind of our practice round. So we had yeah. a Boston Terrier. was awesome. So now yeah. we're we're all about dogs. We we do a lot of charity work with different organizations across the board, but we we do do a lot with uh, with different societies and and helping out pets and everything. So it's kind of cool. It's, it's no, in our it's right. in our DNA. No, it's so fantastic. Well, like I said, it's it's probably you know America's love. You know, a man's best friend and everything. So that's that's amazing. But, Ta- Talk to me a little bit about uh, some of the cool stuff. How about you know a couple of names? How how do we name these beers in general? Hop stupid. I'm sure everybody. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? But I mean, did somebody just drink that and said, "I'm stupid I'm from these hops" or something? Yeah. Well, what, one thing Tony's all about, and yeah, if you don't know, he's a tweeter. You can see him out there logging in his tea, and uh, and he listens to customers, man. And I'll give you a couple examples how he does that. And he, uh, when we were first making the IPA, you know, and with this is you know probably eight years ago, he went to the next one we made that was our big rule was Maximus. And that was our double IPA, and and he was getting a lot of feedback. He was going, hey, you know, guys, we really want is it's a ball. I'm something bigger. He said, all right, here's bigger. How you stop it? Here's 104 IBUs, a big eight plus <laughs> alcohol. You guys will enjoy it. So, just trying to listen to the consumer and have some fun with it. Uh, he does, you know, our names. A, a couple of them, if you don't know, uh, one of them is called uh, Censored. Uh, right. Tell us that story. That it was, yeah, yeah, it was like a copper ale, really good. Nice multi feel to it. What happened was we we made it for about a year in California. It was called the Chronic. Right. You know that Chronic. And <laughs> so, what? <clears throat> excuse me. No, no nothing. Sorry, I just <clears throat> grunted there. <laughs> don't mind me. Anyway, <laughs> so we went up and uh, what, what happened was when if you don't know when you go outside uh, states you go to multiple states you have to go through the Fed and approve the label. So he sent it in, and uh, the guy he knew him he called and said no this shouldn't be a problem Tony I'll approve it I'll send it over to you tomorrow so you can get it going. Well, as soon as that happened, uh, he, he, the guy went home, kind of took some stuff home, and he left it on the table, and his kid came up, his, his young kid came up and said, Oh, Dad, Chronic, they're making beer with weed? And he goes, Why? <laughs> That's awesome. And he goes, so he, said, I can't. he calls Tony, he rejects it, he says, I'm sorry, Tony, I can't do it. Well, Tony goes up and says, Hey, listen, I, I, I don't want to be rude or anything. The biggest beer in the land is Bud. Uh, you know, Miller High Life, but Chronic is a problem. Give me a anyway. For real. <laughs> he, we didn't approve it, so he put a piece of tape over it <clears throat> and wrote censored on it and sent it in, and he approved it. And to this day, that's kind of where that came from. There you go. <laughs> that's so cool. I mean, you know, you, life is true. Color. Life is stranger than fiction. You know, you just can't make that kind of stuff up. It's amazing. <laughs> it's lucky. It's, it's, I wish I could tell you that all this stuff beautiful. is is is, is kind of embellished, or it's actually toned down. Yeah, uh, that's that. Yeah, we're we're a little different. Yeah, I, I don't know. A uh, couple other things. I don't know if you, you know. Uh, yeah, you, ever, you guys heard brown sugar, right? You know, kind of how that came about. Yeah, that's it's a great story. I, I heard that one, but I want you to repeat it because you, I mean, you do you do it better. Tell me about that one. Well, it, what what happened was we uh, we were trying to make a what we uh, we call it a gnarly wine, a barley wine. They came in and uh, the guys were, were they were making it. It was at night. They were trying to get the alcohol content up. And it wasn't it wasn't right. It wasn't fermented properly. So they called Tony and Pam. This was you know six seven years ago. We were, you know we had to just struggle and get by. And uh, so they came up and they called Tony. He said, "Hey, it's not working. What do I got to do?" He goes, "All right, run down the list what you put in there for me." So they ran on the list and he goes, well, "Holy smokes, man! You missed two hundred and fifty pounds of honey. That's going to start the fermenting process." <laughs> Whoops! So the guys go back and they're all panicky. They go, "All right, hey man." Let's, we'll run to the store and get it. And Tony goes, hold on, guys. Uh, exactly how many little plastic pairs is 250 pounds behind? You'll be there for two weeks trying to get them in there. Here's what you need to do. Run out and get some brown sugars. And that's the big thing to cost. So they went and bought Sonoma Town out of brown sugar. Dumped it in there. And they let it sit for about uh, about seven days. And they tried it. And they go, that's not gnarly wine, but it doesn't suck. So they put it back in for another seven, seven days. And they came out. And it really, it really kind of formed into this one thing. And everybody tried it. They pegged up a couple sampled some folks in the in the in our sanctuary they loved it we went through it we blew through it in like two weeks and that's the story we call it brown sugar it's our you know it's our sweet relief the good news as tony always says is you know what the good news is we wrote down what we did so we can keep screwing up every year <laughs> that's great and we're brown it's sugar. amazing and then when you guys didn't have it due to whatever circumstances they're like man lagunita sucks right and that was the next the next uh, package correct yeah, well, what happened was, uh, you know, we get all our, our stuff from Rolex. They're Bavarians. They make the best brew equipment in the world. Right. Well, they were coming over with their new brew house, and the boat hit, got caught in a hurricane and rolled, and the oh. crane came off and beat, beat the like hell out of some of our story. equipment. That was through the Panama Canal, right? 
yeah, and a uh, horrible thing. And Tony, but Tony's like, you know, what are you going to do? So when it finally gets to uh, San Francisco, you know, they call him and they say, hey, Tony, you know, well, what do you want to do? Do you want it? Is it a scrap? What do you want? He goes, no, 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 I want that. I want that. It's all beat up and there's pictures on it and everything. <laughs> so what, uh, it's part of his history. He says, what are you going to do? you just got to roll with it, man, a little bit. So what he's going to do, uh, it'll be uh, over the next few months, they're take it, and it's all dented up in the front. It's big. It's about 30 feet wide and around. You're going to take it, smash it into the front of the brewery, and have like a space guy come out of it and have lights all around it. And that's kind of our history. <laughs> so, that's unbelievable, kind of man. Anyway, well, that, and that's where Stucks came. But because he listens to the consumer so much, we couldn't make brown sugar because it really takes a long time to make it. A lot of, and we were having some inventory issues because of what happened with the, with the brewery and stuff and coming over. So he, he's really sensitive to it and listens to people and online. Well, he said that day when we announced that we weren't going to do it, he got like 200 plus emails about, you suck. <laughs> no, well, you suck. You can't make anything. So he goes, they talked me into, I really do suck. So he goes, well, go to Nigeria, Brewmaster. They kind of made the special recipe with a bunch of rind and some different things, and it was cool. And they brought it out, and if you looked at the bottle, it was kind of a Star of Santa, and he goes, it was apology on there. He goes, well, I need to suck. I'm sorry, I couldn't make it. We just had some problems with the brewery. Take this as a brown sugar substitute too. we can get back on our feet. And it became our biggest seasonal. But it was kind of fun as people around the country ordering, hey, give me a socks. Oh, I love that socks. You know, <laughs> I love that socks. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so is Tony, Tony lives in Chicago now, or is that something I'm picking up in the no, notes? Oh, he's he, still in California. No, no, no. He, he's still in He lives in Lagunitas. Okay. So not far from then. Uh, we're in the process of building our brewery. We're really excited about going back there. I mean, some, some other great guys, Sierra and the Belgium, to build some cool stuff in Asheville. And we looked at doing that a little bit. But we didn't, you know, he, he kind of came down to the, the decision came to the fact that, you know what, he was from Chicago originally. It's kind oh, of okay. Hometown. Okay, that's it. Uh, so he went back there, and it, we would, well, we probably have about 850 draft panels in the city alone. So the, the town's really digging the brand. And the other thing was that, you know what we need to do is let's find a cool place. So it's an old steel mill. Uh, that uh, Half of it is a movie studio where they film Chicago Fire and some movies and stuff. So it's going to be a cool vibe, you know, actors and everything walking around. And we're on the other side, on the other half of the brewery, and we're building it. It's all on, under roof because, you know, weather can be sketchy in Chicago. And yeah. we're building the, uh, we'll have the pub opened and a amphitheater pretty quick here in the next few months. And we'll be up and running with the brewery probably somewhere around the back half of the year, November. So that's the so. Douglas Park area and the, the, the actual air Cinespace, right, is, is who the, the yeah. 150,000 yeah. square foot. It's in Cinespace, 57 foot ceilings. Now, the the tap room is going to be built in the middle. People can go in and drink and watch the brewery being built around them. Is that is that pretty much some of the consensus? Exactly right. It's, it's going to be put up there. It's going to it, they're going to make it a, 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 with a good Chicago flair to it. But they're going to as we talk about it, we're going to take a little piece of Petaluma and move it into Chicago and have some fun with it. Have bands and everything hanging out. And they did a promo. Uh, uh, one of our guys did an awesome job. They did a promo, a big promo and, and charity event where if you brought like, all you had to do is bring the ugliest chandelier in the world, and they got like 450 of these ugly chandeliers. They're going to be amazing. hanging that over. It's what's going to go. And, and it would be very different. It would have a good feel. One thing, it would be a little bit of piece of Petaluma with a little Chicago flair to it. I tell you, we're drinking the censored right now, and it's a rich copper ale. The chronic. The caramel malts. Yeah, the chronic. The caramel malts are unbelievable. You guys really can just bring the flavor. You bring the flavor. You really do. Yeah. It's unbelievable. We've been, we've been very like Jeremy is awesome, and and it's kind of a collaboration. We have several guys that that, that get into it, and it's all about. There's a lot of great beer, great beers being made out there right now. It's kind of, it's an exciting time, but we've been lucky enough that people are digging it and liking it, and we're hanging in there okay. Tell me a little bit about the undercover shutdown. That's a pretty cool name for a beer. What's the story behind that? Uh, well, yeah, uh, there was a what was happening in California was back in '05. They were going around investigating different bars and stuff, and it was just kind of, you know, things happened. They were trying to catch people doing different stuff, and we were just one of them because, uh, you know, obviously, our brewery's got a nice restaurant and everything in there. <laughs> so they couldn't, you know, over several months, they were trying to get folks to do different things, you know, it, you know a- anything that they felt was illegal. Well, they couldn't, nothing came up. I mean, everybody was cool and no big deal. And anyway, so the, the, that investigation kind of wrapped up, and this was in 2005. We have a big party on St. Patrick's Day. Everybody comes out, and it's a lot of fun. Well, one of our guys was hanging out, and, the, and these guys, they were undercover investigators from the California Investigative Bureau, 
came in and <laughs> they went in, they were trying to get him to sell some weed or anything, do anything wrong. Well, he didn't do it. All he just said was, well, well, you know what? You know, if you guys want to you know, smoke one, I'll give you some, but I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sell it. And so they couldn't <laughs> come up with anything. Nothing was legal. So, it, so the, what they did was they came back and they dug up an old prohibition law. It was called Lewd and Lascivious Operations, and it could oh. mean a bunch of different things. Oh, my God. And they shut us down for 30 days. That's ridiculous. And a bunch what of a other places, shit. Too, which almost put us out of business. And uh, so we put in our bottling line. It worked out okay, and we were able to kind of survive it. Um, and But it's kind of cool if you read in the bottle on the bottom, with, you know, kind of irreverent, you know, whatever, we're still here. Uh, yeah. We're trying to hang in there, and it's called Undercover Shutdown Ale. And the funny part about it is the folks that were involved in the investigation, all these people, they are at the brewery every St. Patrick's Day. Uh. <laughs> proud of being part of this, wearing their shirts and everything. So it's kind of cool. That's great. Um, is that no? Is that a seasonal beer that you put yeah. out? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's our, that right about springtime. It, it'll start. You'll see it start popping out, and we have well six packs and kegs in that, and then oh, our other seasonal that kind of back to that is WTF, uh, and that that only comes in bombers and drafts. So we try to. We're a little different. It's not all about the uh, you know. It's it's in the time frame, but it's not about you know a summer ale, which there's some good ones out there. It's more about the style and kind of fits and have some fun with it and. Uh, and that's why you get some of the different names, and, and we try to build it around what, what kind of happened to us, I guess, would be the Okay, the last great story, or, or but the daytime. Tell me about the daytime. I, I think I remember you telling me about that before, and that is just hilarious. That's a classic I buy the glass show. I want to hear that one. <laughs> well, it, it, daytime, it, it, it's we call it a fractional IPA. It's, you know, we're kind of very sessional, pulls people into it, a little bit lower on the IBU. It was not too bad on the IBU, about 54, but lower alcohol, about five. Or seven, something so you can kind of get into it. People dig it. Well, we were wondering where, where the heck did this come from? Well, but my, one of my guys was out there and they were visiting. He was visiting with the other guy and he said they were going to hit some accounts at Petaluma. So he goes, Oh, hold on a second, man. I got a meeting. Uh, would you mind? It's going to take about an hour. Can you go over? Hey, why don't you go over and, and talk to some of the guys at the brew house to kind of find out what's going on? Said, okay, so he walks over and like two minutes later he gets a call from the same guy. He says, uh, Meet me back at the beer sanctuary. He goes, Oh, okay. what happened? He sounded like it was rough up. Gets back there, he goes, what the hell happened? He goes, well, the guy who was having the meeting got his daytime weed and his nighttime weed. He's all screwed up meeting over. <laughs> so, so we figured we can make a beer that we can drink and function during the day. Why don't we make our own? And said, oh, man. That's awesome, man. That's probably one of the That's best great. stories ever. That really is funny. That is classic. That was kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. It's such a pleasure. I mean, it's such a pleasure to have a brand and a beer that's just full of fun. Great stories. Great stories, and this, these stories represent a culture that's coming from these people that it's just second to none. And they, like I said, you can't even you, you couldn't you can fake this if you tried. This is this is the real deal, and it's it's what's it's what's coming around. It's a renaissance in beverage, and and people are starting to open their eyes to so you can have fun, be good, and and get it done. Right, John? I mean, that's what it's really all about. Yeah, it, it's a great thing. I mean, it's an exciting time for for beer as a whole. I mean, everybody's doing some great great stuff, and. And you just see people that change in how they how they drink. They're engaging with it, kind of like the stuff that went on with uh, not a comparison, but kind of what happened with wine. Uh, people are just digging it and, and enjoying it and having fun, and, and it's really revitalizing the whole business. People are drinking a little less, but a little bit better. Uh, and it's kind of we couldn't be happier. Man. You know, you've been in Florida a little while with Gold Coast. We're ecstatic about doing that. We're just starting to get uh, get placed here and get everything set up. Uh, but you're going to see a lot of us out there, and, uh, and we'll have some fun and tell some stories and uh, just enjoy some good beer. You can't can't beat that. There's nothing better than yeah. and, uh, bring, our, bring our pooches out and yeah. sit out and hang. Absolutely. Now, you guys are going to – you were hoping to hit number five on that list of top ten. I mean, you guys are growing at such a clip that you're thinking, you know, you're yep. going to hit that. I mean, tell me about the, the explosion of the growth. I mean, you guys are hitting, I mean, ridiculous numbers every year. It just keeps growing. It's just expanding. It's amazing. And now that you know, you keep coming out with all these wonderful, you know, new new offerings and everything. It's really nonstop. I mean, the sky's the limit. No, we've been very lucky, and uh, you know, it's about just you know getting people with their getting people with the beer, and they they seem to be digging it, and and and, and hopefully they keep doing that, and we'll try to make the best beer we can. It's, you know, we you know being a number doesn't for us. It's kind of not that. It's more about just hey, you know what. Uh, we keep doing the right things and, and treating the consumer and the retailers and everybody and the servers right, we'll be okay. That's fantastic. Uh, and the other, the other stuff will, will fall into place. Yeah. Tell me, uh, just uh, the, the Chicago breweries, that, so that's 
post slated for late 2013, and then uh, tap room done April first. Beer brewed September. Are we on schedule for that, or how, how's that going? Oh yeah, it, yeah, they're it's doing really well. They're, as we speak, everything's being you know prepped, and uh, then they're working on the brewery. So yeah, hopefully late part, sometime in November, October, November, which is the goal. And I, I, I think everything I've heard, they're on track. That's great. Uh, lastly, John, any little snippet of news, maybe some information uh, we can get out to the people? They're, they're dying for it. They want to know what's going on. Anything uh, you can give me that's not too uh, too top secret? Uh, we're working on something. It's not for sure. Uh, but you might uh, see Suck come back a little later in the year in uh, ah. a little different format than you're used to, meaning package. But uh, we're working on it, trying to figure out if that can fit, fit okay and all right. We've got a really great response, but uh, you'll we'll probably hear more about that in the next few months. So cool. I'll know exactly where it is. And then you had mentioned a Florida or a fusion beer that you that you currently have in Oregon that you might bring to Florida and call Florida Fusion or something like that. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we make a fusion series, this one would be Fusion Thirteen, uh, and because a lot of folks had asked for something like that, and this is something we kind of make special. Uh, we're going to have them here in Florida for probably about a month and a half. Uh, it'll probably arrive here in about 30 days. So, uh, more to come on that. We don't, you know, we're we're still trying to figure out what, you know, there's a lot of laws and different things. But right now, it's called Fusion 13. It's a big hit. And we, we've done them in different places, Oregon, and we just did one uh, that's just going to start next week for in Austin for South by Southwest. We did a Fusion 12 there, and and we're going to have something here that 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 Tony and Jeremy put together, which is going to be cool that we'll be able to sell here in Florida called Fusion 13. So yeah. more to come in that. It'll be, it'll be cool, though. You'll like it. What I loved about it is I asked you guys, well, what kind of beer is it? What kind of style? I'm, I'm sitting there all these questions. I, we don't, I really, really don't know. It's kind of why we call the Fusion. <laughs> I love the answer. It's, it's great. It's like a lot. It's like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We're locked fucking eat us. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Don't have a clue. <laughs> I love it. John Donaldson, Lagunitas Brewing. Absolutely wonderful company. Great beer. Great guy. We love having you. Thank you so much for calling in to Buy the Glass show. And uh, it's going to be an awesome uh, 2013 and, and many more years to come. Hey, uh, thanks for all, all support and everything. Uh, we're static Floridians. Whatever you need from us, we're going to do our best to, to earn your trust. And uh, cheers to you guys. If you ever need anything, let me know. All right, buddy. Thanks so much. Have Thank a great you. evening. Thanks, John. Bye. Fantastic. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back on By the Glass Show, we will drink more Lagunitas. Yay. Keep it up and get going and get crazy and have fun like we always do on By the right. Glass Show on SoFloRadio.com. SoFloRadio.com. We take comedy seriously. SoFloRadio.com. Put a team of professional consultants behind your home or business computer with key information solutions. Providing solutions to your internet and computing needs while keeping you on the cutting edge of technology. Preventative maintenance and networking support. Hardware and custom built computers. Let key information solutions be your personal tech staff for your home or office with affordable hourly, monthly, or annual rates to fit anyone's budget. Call Key Information Solutions now. 954 That's 954-973-3374. Or visit keyinformation.com. In these hard economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you have a car, truck, or SUV, you could stop paying for all covered repairs. That's right. You might not have to pay a penny more than you want for repairs. Just call 1-800-610-7840 right now to see if you qualify. Repairs for your engine, transmission, and much more can become a thing of the past if your vehicle has less than 130,000 miles. Just call 800 610 7840 today and get your car protected, saving you hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Phone lines are open right now. See if your vehicle qualifies. Just call 1 800 610 7840 to get your car protected today. Call 800 610 7840. That's 1 800 610 7840. Never pay for covered car repairs again. Just call 800 610 7840. That's 1 800 610 7840. 
We're rewarding you for something you already do. Listening to us. It's radio loyalty, and it's an easy way for you to get free stuff. All you do is sign up. Go ahead and click the banner now. You'll earn points as you listen. Points you can trade in for great products and services in the radio loyalty store. You can earn even more points when you share your favorite station with friends on Facebook and Twitter. Radio loyalty. It's free to sign up. So click the banner to join now. Have you ever wondered how you could make a difference in someone's life? What if you could help hundreds or even thousands of children? Students in the U.S. rank 32nd in world math skills. It's time for our children to catch up. Become an owner of one of the world's fastest growing franchises, Mathnasium. Mathnasium is the leading math-only learning center in the U.S. Imagine helping hundreds, even thousands of students in your community improve in school and raise their self-esteem. Call us at 800-434-1360. 800-434-1360. Hi, this is John Nash from the Sports Tech Show. Log on to SoFloRadio.com every Sunday from 8 to 10. And catch me, John Edge, Natalise, and George Rodriguez, a.k.a. Ivan Bad, talk sports, current events, entertainment, and all that good stuff from 8 to 10 every Sunday. And then on Tuesdays, for those who just want to hear strictly sports, Tuesdays at night from 7 to 9, where you will hear me, John Edge, Joe Buck, and Kyle Jones talk strictly sports. Those who like statistics, those who like in-depth coverage of each game, Tuesdays at night. That's right, only on SoFloRadio.com. Again, Sunday from 8 to 10, and on Tuesdays from 7 to 9. Log on to the best website in the world, SoFloRadio.com. Peace. And now we return you to By the Glass. Glass. I keep forgetting Brett can actually sing. He's not one of these like <laughs> posers. Oh, I'm gonna sing now. Uh, nice yeah. effect, yeah. There's yeah. there's a scale. There's sounding good in the shower, okay at karaoke, and then Brett Hubbard. Oh, hey, yeah. I, I have a rock band. I'm entitled to sing. I can sing along with Sublime. We wrote some new songs the other night too. Uh, All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's, this, there's this place called um, Rock and Angels. Oh, up there, yeah. it's it's right off of Dixie and uh, and uh, Del Rey, and we're gonna definitely go jam up there anyway. Right. So anyway, welcome back to By the Glass, show about beverage culture, Thank where you, we dear. drink the taste and some good beers. We just had Mr. John Donaldson log in, Enos Brewing Company call in, and uh, you know I gotta say, what a great guy, what a great company, what good times. This is what it's all about. Yeah, folks. they're fun. It's no longer tastes great, let's fill it. It's about you know daytime and what a and, laid back and brewing and company sucks and all that kind of. And really undercover. cool stuff that you just couldn't even make up if you tried. Yeah, undercover shutdown, baby. I mean, it's like it's a Grateful Dead ta- song, you know, and that's where they're from. And it's it's a lot of good times and a lot of collaborations, and uh, it just things are going to just keep getting better. Boy, they love hops, though. I'll tell you that. Every, well, I mean, even their malty stuff has a kick. Yeah, but hops. it's not it's not like nasty. It's no, no, it's all isn't great. That funny, they you guys. I mean, that's we, the best part. We're about, hop haters over here. That's yeah. a, that's the best part about this show is that you guys are. They always had the more the the public view. I mean, you're they not, do something with it. You know, they, they do something to their beers yeah. that make it more palatable. Absolutely. It's the creaminess. It's the the way that it breaks it down. I mean, the hops. Uh, you know, if you want to get geeky, Little the isomerization bubble. of hops gives alpha acids. But the fact of the matter is, is their hops are <laughs> the isomerization so of hops gives alpha bitter. acids. Which They're one are we so drinking bitter. now? This one here is little something something. Oh, this okay. is a wheat beer. That's how you see that wonderful, beautiful head. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's a crystal vison. That means that it's not cloudy. It's a it's a crystal see through beer, and it's got a wheat ish kind of flavor. But it's eight percent alcohol, All right. and the wheat Whoa. gives you a real nice dry. Seven point five actually, Brett. Okay, I'm sorry. And it also gives you a wonderful fruit ester. Now, do you get a lot more of those? Really lovely fruits this off the This is delicious top. when it hits your tongue. You know, it's fantastic. And when you stick your nose in the glass, you get a tremendous amount of uh, citrus. It smells like beer. You don't, you don't, it doesn't no, smell no, like grapefruits to yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I got some flowery, flowery, like flowery it citrusy, fruity. It smells like flowery fruity. citrus to me. There's the wonderful hops that they're using out there. Now, those are definitely some Cascade. Yeah, I got Cascade hops for sure. You know, they're, they're, they're just popping like a right Sierra, Sierra Nevada. Well, it's a, a little bit. Well, that's a pale ale. This is, a, you know, this is like a, a 50. They probably use about 20 to 30% wheat. Uh, malted wheat 
in their um, their base, and then the rest is, is I would good. imagine, um, you know, different types of pale malts and that type of thing. But it's a wonderful, wonderful offering. It's got a lovely golden color, and it's just a really nice, fluffy white head. I mean, look at the. I still have a head. Yeah, look yeah. at the. Um, Look at it. Look mm. at the foam there. It's got really nice. It's clumpy. You know, when, when you get that really nice, they call it bubble gum uh, or bubble gum balls or, you know, like because it's lumpy, all different types of balls and stuff. That's a really, really nice. You know, that means that their yeast is strong. It's propagating correctly. It's got a really, it's really lively and it's just really working for them. I mean, that's what it's all about. These guys just make amazing beers. It's good beer. This would be so, yeah. And that's this the thing. Like they can have great beer. gimmicks and great, you know, uh, stories, great names, all kinds of different things going on but in the end it's really about the beer and the beer is exceptional the guy was brewing beer f- for the hell of it and then all I love of a how sudden, he started with a little beer kit yeah I everybody that, starts man. with that little beer kit how this many actually of those has something really awesome on the bottle it says life is uncertain don't sip that is true and then yeah. beers you know what <laughs> yeah and then you know uh people mumble beer speaks people mumble That's there you good. go there you go. It's true because I was just mumbling as I said it but also uh folks at home the best thing about this little something something let me see the uh label there if you guys check it out, go to the Loganitas.com. The, actually, the uh, girl on there is, is Loganitas. I think her name's Betty, and uh, she's a little Betty. Yeah, go check absolutely. out the. Uh, and they do all those like '50s kind of posters and stuff. Go check out their website. The, Jane, the, the shirt for that is even cooler. The Jane Mansfield, yeah, the looking like girl. It. Yeah, they have great shirts, guys. They have a wonderful amount of POS. You know what's really cool? Remember those butterfly knives that the the Chinese do? Sure, use the butterfly. Yeah, they yeah, have gotta, a butterfly a opener. Oh, get out. You have George's Because I know how to do that. You? Well, yeah, guess I what, taught George? my daughter. I'm going to get you one. Really? Oh, man. That's gonna, I'm going to be the coolest <laughs> guy at the party It's going to be a butterfly <laughs> beer opener. Yeah, I'll get you oh, one. Oh, that'll so be cool. And I was sweet. using one the other day, too. I was doing that whole thing. <laughs> I taught my daughter how to do that. Did you see the, the movie Kick-Ass? No. Oh, you got to see it. I'll, I'll get you a Did copy. See that movie? It has the, the father teaching his daughter how to do oh, the, uh, the yeah, yeah, butterfly knife. And me and my daughter had a moment there in the theater. This is an amazing beer. Yeah, it's really It just comes right out with so much citrus. And then now, have, is, it, is this on just draft little, anywhere down here? No, this one's not on draft. Yeah. All I really have found on draft down here is the IPA and the pills. Okay, but you live in uh, World of Beer. World of Beer has Territory. IPA. Okay, and they might have pills. Okay, but I also know that there's a little place called the um, the Tipperary in uh, over there in Deerfield by Jeremy Studio oh. that has the pills on. I went and had a couple pills there the other night. Mm-hmm. The pills on tap is 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 phenomenal too. Um, it's a little bit. It's got a little bit more bright hop. Initially, but it also creams right out. I just, I just love what these guys are doing. And you know, it took me a while to figure out that you were talking about pills, like that shirt, whatever you, the pilsner. Yeah. You kept saying pills, and I kept thinking like purple pills. Yeah, that you would, George. <laughs> <laughs> Little round pills with stamps on them, <laughs> George. <laughs> well, I mean, you kept saying pills and pills, and I think like it sounded like Rush Limbaugh over there. <laughs> what? I can't hear you. Rush what? Limbaugh. <laughs> oh. oh. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, pills. They just call it that. They just use the P I L S. And then check style. It was funny because it's like a bunch of rednecks in that place. And when you when you walk in, they're like, I was like, hey, let me get a Lagunitas. And they're like, you mean that Czech beer? I'm like, no, because it says Czech style pills on the bottom. Like, that's <laughs> the most American beer you can possibly buy. You know, that's the American story. It's ingenuity. That's America. Somebody starting up America. Somebody starting up with a, you know, a little beer kit and taking it all the way to a 600,000 barrel brewery. That's America. On, on Two coasts. I, it's yeah. just ridiculous. I mean, it's amazing. And then they're on track for Chicago. I'm so psyched. I've never been to Chicago. This seems like really? I will oh, be going Chicago to Chicago fun. to this brewery to check this out. And then they're going to build the, the brewery around the tap room. Everything they do has just got a really great flair to it. And it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and an absolute pleasure. But as we drink all these wonderful fine offerings from Longaninas, wine, beers, spirits, and everything on this show, we like to say do so responsibly. Do not drink and drive. Please do not overconsume. Don't drink until Never. you're 21, and if you're pregnant, please wait the nine months. Your children will thank you. And uh, that being said, uh, what do you guys think? I mean, uh, just absolutely top notch, right? Yeah, this is very absolutely. Good. Yeah, I saved the Maximus for last. It's so handcrafted. It's funny because I was talking to somebody today, and they were telling me about uh, the handcrafted aspect. There's actually breweries now that are completely automated to the point to where there's not one single human being in the brewery. There's just one guy that sits in the control room, and we're talking massive football-sized warehouses with everything going on. Just comes in in the truck, gets dumped It comes in in the truck, they they dump the grain, they dump the hops, 
and then what they do it's is all it got it all automated just goes in sanitized. they get the temperatures the water oh. flows in makes the mash it goes gets pumped into this one pumped into that one goes into the bottling and there's not one person even the forklifts no that drive stuff around are all on lasers and stuff there's not one heartbeat in the whole That's place crazy. and they don't even need the guy in the control room but he's kind of like homer simpson you know he's got the little thing there. going back and forth yeah. that hits the button and he's sleeping and they don't even need him it's it's absolutely all right, hey, amazing. i got a beer question Go, yeah, all yeah, right yeah. so since we didn't have hop stupid and that's what my uh, friend was looking for us to have how does this compare to that okay hop and should stupid. he go out and try this one absolutely this is the maximus this is their imperial ipa now an imperial Ooh. ipa is going to be like okay. super IPA. The difference between an Imperial IPA or let's say like a yeah, barley wine. Easy does it on that one. Okay. Means that hmm? it's really all about the alcohol levels as opposed to the IBA, IBUs. IBUs, International Bitterness Unit. Now, with an Imperial IPA, you're going to have, give me one second there. You're going to have higher alcohol as and then you're going to have the IBU to match it with a, with something like a barley wine. You're going to have more that's good more alcohol with less IBU. So there's really a variance on how much alcohol to IBU is the difference distinction between I think a barley this has wine alcohol and an imperial. The hops. Now the yeah. hop stupid is a is is a, is, a, is, is, is a variation on that. It has even more IBUs than the max, but it might have a little less alcohol. I'm okay. not 100% on that. We'll Why don't that. you pull it up, Jason, and I we can talk about here, it? Because yeah. I see the this Max. This is yummy. Show me the. Uh, this is really, really like good, it? George. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Right? And you yeah. guys are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I, I thought this not was going to be the people. worst one. Yeah. Unbelievable. So your friend John from uh, does that some good flavor to it? Yeah, uh, we won't need to say where he's from, but uh, right. someone I work with, right? Seventy-two IBUs. He's That's been uh, going to seventy-two going to... IBUs. What does that mean? I don't that know means what that, that means. It, that means those are international bitterness units. <laughs> That's it's, not very... and, and, and let's say a, a Miller Light is like a three. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. This is seventy-two. <laughs> So this is an IPA Maximus. So it has 8.2% alcohol, and the wow. IBUs are 72. So let's look at what the hop stupid is. Why don't you pull that up, Jason? To, yeah. And then we'll be able to differentiate between the two beers and tell you the, the exact difference because I'm not going to lie to you. What's the IBU on the I IPA? Oh, I actually have the information here. The IPA, uh, the regular IPA, yeah. is... It doesn't say on this information. It's 6.2% alcohol, but it doesn't say IBUs. Now... The hop stupid is twenty. It doesn't give me any information. Oh, eight percent alcohol, so it's lower alcohol, and one hundred and two IBUs. It's more of a barley wine. Okay, right? Does that make sense? No, no, no. It's more of a. It's even more of an imperial. The more the higher alcohol, lower lower IBU is barley wine. This is more of an imperial. So it's going to be even. So what they've done is they've reduced the alcohol to let the hops shine through even more. So there's even That's more. One hundred and two IBUs. People this say is that you're. Wow. People say that, and that we're not trying that. That's the hop stupid. But this is the Maximus. People say that your threshold for tasting bitterness units stops at a hundred. Okay, so, so they're over that. Yes, obviously. Which is exactly what they would do. Now look at the look at the head on this. This is ridiculous. Yeah, th this is it's unbelievable. It's, I mean, you and it's it? very like there's there's small I mean, I bubbles. Thought, it's like I very for sure creamy George foam. George was gonna not like this. I thought. Yeah, for sure I was not. I, like I was. This you know what really makes, good beer? Oh my gosh, it's this amazing. And the thing about it is, when you get to an imperial IPA, you have to increase your maltiness. You have to increase your mouthfeel, the dextrins. You have to increase the sweetness, basically, and then. The hops need to be balanced. So we balance the hops with a big, uh, sweeter malt, more caramel malts, malts that are going to... Boy, two of those and you're out somewhere? That's all you need. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely, because this one's 8.5, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's absolutely insane. It's fantastic. That beer. extra 0. 0.5, though, just cuts through. It does, it, and it's it's really amazing. It's refreshing. That these guys have got it down to science. You know, that's, that's what they say about the Maximus. They made it for a really hot summer day when you can go out. You want something that's going to cut through on your tongue, and you're really going to feel it. But it's still going to be refreshing. You can drink it. Who thought wow. you could drink an 8.5 percent alcohol beer? No, that, uh, you know would would cut through like With that. A 59 IBU. Mm -hmm. That's yummy. It really is. And I'm so glad to hear you guys say that. Yeah. No, I'm because the malts really come through, and it's so cold. This one's nice and cold and refreshing. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> and it, it's it's fantastic. I'm really enjoying myself, That's guys. It has been an absolute pleasure. What do you got over there? I can't see Dio. The you, butterfly bottle. Opener. You like that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, We're gonna get one so for the cool. studio. Go, I have one. Go we'll check out one. their website. It's yeah, really everybody, good. go to loginitas.com. And you know, thanks so much for John for calling in. Thanks for Ed Roberts for putting together a great show as usual. Thanks for Total Wine for uh, for just being you, Total Wine. And uh, thanks to uh, Tony McGee for uh, starting a great brewery. Thanks, thank you, George. 
Thank you, Dio. Thank you, Jason. Love oh, you. Oh, you're sweet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks, Brett, talking. for uh, well, yes, well, thank, thank you, Brett, for, Brett, for, for starting a show called Body Glass, where we can get show. together every Thursday and drink. Yeah, letting and, and let everybody hear us. Just, <laughs> and uh, let the beer speak, so we can mumble. <laughs> and that's what we do. Tune well, in well, next week, folks. Where we're gonna have another great show for you. We're on every Thursday at six on SoFlow Radio and BodyGlassShow.com. Thank you so much for joining us. And to go out to your Total Wine ABC, Whole Foods, and whatnot uh, to uh, get a great log and eat us. And at your local bar, World of Beer, and everywhere that's coming to you live, uh, just like we are. Everybody have a wonderful evening. And uh, drive safe, please. And uh, be safe. See you next week. Good night. SoFloRadio.com and SoFloTelevision.com. 